hello it's Sarah and today I'm going to do a file folder but it's a pouch because I have a lot of like stuff in this file folder here this is what I what was thinking and these are actually strips of paper that I was using for mixed media morsels there's all types of little bits and pieces in here and I just thought it might be nice to have a pouch to put it in, so we'll see, because I haven't even tried that yet. Uh, totally inspired, <coughs> first by Robin Marie Smith, because of the stitching, because I actually stitched this on my sewing machine to get it to, to turn into a pouch. And this is actually a file folder. Um, she has a video on Vimeo, and I'll try and put the link in the description but it's art mail. She makes art mail out of a file folder and that's kind of where the idea came from. Well, for the pouch anyway, to stitch up a, a file folder. Um, also, I'm gonna be doing the mixed media part in the style of um, Kate Crane. I took a class with Kate, again on Vimeo, I'm pretty sure. Mixed media, no, 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 no. Journal soup. Um, and I just love her style and freeness. Now, Robin has a very, and also a very free style of mixed media as well. But um, Kate is a little more, I, I just think I'm more familiar with it. Anyway, so this is what it's, this one's like. I'm going to change the colors up a little bit. Um, so I have a palette. This is just a paper palette. Got this at AC Moore yesterday for a dollar, and I'm going to see, this is by Nicole, but I'm going to use this just to put my paint on, um, and it's just got a waxy surface to it, and you can just throw them out, but it was a dollar, so that was awesome. And I have some scruffy brushes, um, nothing special. This is mixed media, so we're going to make a mess. This is actually a file folder that I got from Staples, and this is the heavy duty ones. I'm not going to suggest that if you'll be stitching yours. I decided to try a flimsier folder and it worked out well. Um, but that's what I normally use for all my crafting. These were from the dollar store and you get 10 file folders. Um, you get 10 in this pack and they're much, much uh, thinner. So they're very, they're a lot more flimsy. So I would say if you're, you know, Unless you're stitching through it, maybe you don't want to use that. But I've already gone ahead and gessoed the paper on the outside surface and just a little bit on the top here because I'm going to be painting that as well. So when you open the pouch, you don't see, there's nothing inside, but I just painted the top because when you stitch it closed, you can see that part of the folder as well. Uh, I just did that to save us time. And then I also pulled all my mark making tools that I use for mixed media. I have some stencils. This is a new stencil that I got from Stencil Girl. I've only used it once, but it has a lot of variation. So I thought I'd use that one today. I don't know how you guys choose what stencils you're going to use. Like it's, I have so many stencils and I can't pick them. Um, you guys know what this is called. I forget. My go-to circle um, stencil by uh, Diane Reevely. And then this is just a, I was going to use, I, I like to use the um, plastic canvas to make black marks, but I like to use this little dots one too. Um, this is called, it's sequin waste, and I can't think of the name of it. Um, so I have some stamps, my go-to stamps, some that I've carved myself. Um, I don't know that I'll use them all, but I just wanted them out here um, and other mark making um, tools sponges these are just makeup sponges that I use to stencil with and some paint I have a couple colors of washi that's gonna go along with my paint colors but and I, I mean I'm gonna try and use it it's it's weird for me to use it but Kate is big on adding it so I just put on this one I put made with love and some polka dots and I like flower with black it's a good way to add black <clears throat> I have a couple Neocolor 2's. These are water soluble um, wax pastels. And 
I, I got these because I'm taking Lifebook and um, Tam, Tamara Laporte likes to use these a lot in her mixed media and I'm finding that I like them as well now that I'm, I want, I want to try and get back into it. But Kate always used um, an oil pastel or something to do her scallops and different extra added stuff and mine never worked right so these worked really well for me. Alright, so and then you need some water and your colors. So for this, I'm going with red, blue, and yellow. And these are, I guess, your primary colors, right? Yesterday I chose a pink, a like a baby blue, and a yellow. And it just, it makes it more pastel. So if you're into pastels, go with that. But I wanted to change it up because those, I tend to always grab those colors and I wanted to see what happens when I changed it up a little. So this is almost red, it's raspberry. This is called Copen Blue, so it's not your, it's not navy, you know, and this is just Cad Yellow, but when you mix, blue and red make purple, blue and yellow make green, and red and yellow make orange. So you shouldn't get mud. That's my thought when I do this. No mud allowed. Um, but if you get mud, you can always um, rub it out with white. So we have white and black, excuse me, as well. Now, I did tend to make sure I was stamping and stuff like facing forward. It doesn't matter. It's a mixed media piece and you can do it. So what I'm saying is if you're going to do it like this and everything's facing this way, when you close it, <laughs> it'll be facing that way. You know what I mean? So just keep in mind if, if, you, if that bothers you or if you want everything to be, you know, in the right direction, like my hearts. If I was working on it like this open, you know, my hearts would have been on the side, which probably is fine, you know. I did also grab some butterflies. These are from a collage sheet, and I cannot think of the name. I have randomly downloaded things, and I just go through what I have. This was actually already cut out, and I thought, well, I could put butterflies on this. And so you know, use what you have and just, you know, I didn't want to think too much. I have to pick up Maya. So I only have a couple hours to get this done. So on my original one, I did do some collage. There are a couple of pieces of um, dictionary under here, but I'm going to skip that part because I really did cover it up. Um, and you can always collage, you could collage the whole background if you like that texture. And you know what? It would also add bulk to the paper. It would make it a little stronger. But then again, don't forget, you're going to stitch it. If you're creating this um, pocket, you are going to be stitching. So um, that being said, I'm skipping it this time. And we're just going to start to add color. I'm going to put some blue out first. And I shook it up. These are, um, by the way, these are all paints that I've had in my stash forever. Americana and um, Ceramco are what I tend to have. These are craft paints. Um, but use what you have again. Um, those of you who have good quality paints, go for it. And I also have a little bit of matte medium out. I'm going to put that out just to thin it down uh, because sometimes I don't want solid paint. Or look, I'll show you the difference. I'll show you. Let's just start. I have this big, ugly brush. Let me dry it out a little bit. Um, but what I mean is, and I'm also going to have uh, the end of a brush handy. And I forgot to do this on my other one, but Kate likes to make lines in her wet paint. So I'll show you. I'm going to load this with a little bit of gel medium. Actually, this is matte medium. And it's the Fluid by Liquitex. And I think gel medium is basically the same thing. I mean, you know, I'm not an expert, but, you know, I think you'll be fine. And I'm just going to load some of this blue in here and just start. I'm going to go, but look, if it's, um, the brush is drier, you see the effect you get. And because I gessoed it, <clears throat> here and there, I used my palette knife when I gessoed. So it's not going to be, um, like there's parts of the file folder that are naked and then there's parts that have the gesso. So I am just 
really freely not thinking well I am I think a little bit I kind of want paint going in both directions here and there and then if I can while it's wet you just flip your brush and go Kate does that isn't that fun you could write a word you could do you know there's so many things you do then I'm just going to pull the paint off my brush oops I didn't put all the colors out and go into some yellow I'm going to put some um, this I used raspberry just to be it's still a little pink I probably should go a little redder primary red no I'm sticking with the pink I'm just going to stay with this one for now and a little more matte medium now so I'm going to try and overlap some too so I'm going to load in raspberry and a little matte medium and I'm going to try and go in places I haven't gone but just let whatever happens happens and I'm already getting purple because I have some blue left in my brush but I do want to make sure I get some pink areas so and again I think I want to do I love that and this will be underneath because um, we're gonna stencil on top too so um, I'm not crazy about this raspberry color it looks kind of mauvey but you know what we'll add yellow and just see what happens we're just gonna keep it going I need some over here and I used a lot of gel medium in that look so it's like really sheer but you know what that'll leave us a place to stencil on top with solid paint and let's do a scallop over there I'm just gonna pull the paint you know what I'm gonna rinse I'm gonna rinse because I want my yellow to be true and then when it mixes turn orange and what green so I'm gonna get some gel medium and some yellow and just put it on and then if I go over into areas that have the blue they should turn green and the other the red should turn orange but I want some true yellow too it's kind of looking like a patchwork and I think that's how my brain works though I don't want to I don't want to make mud and I, I need my eye to feel like it has somewhere to go I can't just have it I don't know we'll try to mix it up with when we do some stenciling we'll see how it goes I want to cover everything and just for the video purpose I'm not going to do the inside but don't forget about that little part of your inside when you close it this is going to show up here so you want to paint that too but for video purposes I'm just going to um, skip over that part but I'm liking the dry brushing over it so that some of the underneath shows through. I'm going to put blue up here and see if it turns green. So yeah, so I totally have green along that edge. I don't have a lot of orange and I love orange so I think I'm going to go back into the red and try and make this a little orangey right here it eh, didn't really work but I don't want to make mud so I'm gonna you know what this is so different because the other one is so pink and blue it's so pastel -y. this is like so harsh to my eye but I like it I'm gonna leave it I think I've covered enough I'm just rinsing my brush um, and I forgot to do like um, create it's not wet enough I forgot anyway 
Um, now I'm going to add some white. So I need to put some white out. Uh, where is it? Here. And I'm just going to rub it with my fingers. This is how Kate does it. And try and soften some areas that look a little rough. And it really works. Oh, I also have some stamp um, ink that I might stamp with too. That's a lot. I didn't want to put that much. I use a baby wipe. I'm just going to grab a baby wipe because I want to pick some up. There we go. Because we're going to add color with um, stencils and um, uh, some ink as well. And it really looks like a mess at this point, so don't panic. But see how the white is kind of softening it? Maybe you don't. Maybe it isn't. I don't know. I like this green. I do want some true white some places too, like just like that. And this is just um, feeling it out and seeing what you think. Okay, so I'm going to stop. And I could hit it with the heat tool too. But I think, I, I think I am. I think I'm going to hit it and I'll be right back. Okay, it's all dry. So I've kind of just now spread out some paint on my palette to use as a stamp, or I mean an ink pad type thing. I have these carved stamps. These are um, leaves. And I want to make marks on the piece in the original colors. So I'm going into some areas with this stamp, but I want it to be in the really original pink color and I put it in the pink areas too I'm not trying to get it into um, I have one that's a little smaller I'm going to use my smaller one same color and just put pink paint right in the pink paint area but it's a little more hopefully you can see it and I love this um, little leaf stamp. This is working out well. And I'm just, because I'm going to do um, butterflies, I thought I would go with like some foliage looking stuff underneath. Or, you know, popping out from behind. So that's enough of that. I have a couple of swirls. I love using these swirls. I'm going to do them in the blue because I have this big one. I'm going to do this. Let me make my paint a little bigger because this kind of represents sky to me. This is actually a, a kid's foam type of stamp. And um, I just cut a swirl in a thin sheet of it and glued it on to, actually it was sticky back already. You can buy it with the sticky back. And see how I'm putting it in the blue areas trying to. I don't have a lot of blue over there. I'm going to stick it over there. So you keep, it kind of stays where, see this has no blue, but that's okay. I'm going to flip it because I did put a little paint on here. Just because. Alright, so what else? I want to do yellow. I think I came unplugged. Sorry, guys. Um, I'm just adding color back onto it. Full strength color with different um, mark making tools. And right now I'm using stamps that I've carved myself. So I'm going to go into the yellow with this. Uh, it's like a sun shape. And I'm going to pop that in here. In the yellow areas, though, I tend to keep... 
um, the colors on top of each other not well what am I trying to say like I don't put yellow over pink necessarily I mean it's going to happen but I try to keep it see how even some pink got on the yellow because um, on my palette I have it right next to each other I love it I love it it starts to come together but now all that muddy color behind it is it's going to come forward. I had a spot I wanted to go with this, with this yellow up here. Um, and we're still going to do more. I'm just going to flip this over and put a little bit here and here. Um, I have a lot of paint on this. So what, what you missed was, oh, and it even splashed a little. So yeah, the second step, I like to use paint to add like straight the color. Um, so I did the blue, pink, and yellow already. Now I could do some white. And I like to do white with circles. Circles are really cool. Um, they just, I like circles. They make me happy. So that's why I do them. Because guess what, guys? If it doesn't make you happy, don't do it. Why? I mean, I actually did, I struggled through a few in the beginning uh, mixed media pieces because I like to have a process. Some people, if you watch their videos, to me, I don't, I don't see a process. I don't see where they're going with their piece. But I need to kind of have, I, I need to have a process. So this is my process. Um, I think I want to add a couple more pink leaves. I want to add a couple more over here. Isn't that weird that we're doing pink leaves? Pink. But um, also watching videos of people who have a style, who have a... Um, see, I, I kind of have a palette that I love too. That's the other thing. Um, I tend to always come back, come back to the same colors. So, all right, that's enough. Um, but uh, it looks messy at first, but we're gonna straighten it out, don't worry. And just keep, so I'm, I'm going to white now, I'm gonna get some white. I had white out, oh, it's over on the yellow. Um, just keep it moving and you'll see, it's gonna come together. So with white, I guess I'm gonna do circles. And I have this Tim Holtz um, stamp that I love to use for my circles, and it is right here. It's kind of a, a geometric stamp, and I'm going to go into the white paint with that and go, again, over the white areas, wherever there's white, but it just is a pop. And maybe this is all wrong, but we'll see at the end what happens. Right? We'll see. Time will tell. And to me, that represents clouds. Let's put a little white. And you know what? That's underneath. It's not even going to show. Right there. Um, and that was really thick. But I love it. I think it's good. And you can absolutely see that. There's a nice pink leaf there. I think I'm going to jazz that up. I'm going to put a little white there and a little white there. So I'm just kind of basically um, cleaning off the stamp. And then I always use bottle caps to make circles too. But I think I'm going to get into stamping now with, with actual ink. I have black. I always like to add black. Kate was a big, um, I'll show you what she does with that. Well, after, I should probably, no, I'm going to do the stamping, no, I'm going to do the paint first. So she would take black paint on the palette and just, so I'm going to move. A gift card. <coughs> Excuse me. Run, run the edge of the gift card through the paint and then just make lines and scrapes. So line, 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 scrape. And it's scary at 
first, but I actually really get into it. <laughs> and sometimes you don't always get a good scrape, but sometimes you do. And you can just make lines. It, but black really adds a lot to a piece. So I'm going to put a little up here. Scrape. Let's put some on the inside. My scrape isn't coming off as good. All right. Do I need more? I mean, it can it can get like crazy because I love it so much. Like I keep going. All right, I'm stopping. Because you can also use, this is another great thing to use. This is plastic canvas. And I've actually done plastic canvas, made things with this. Um, when my mom was sick, it was something that I could bring with me because I you, you use yarn and you just stitch through it. Um, so this is just a circle that I ha cut out of the plastic canvas. And then I just use that to make marks as well. Black really makes it pop. It, it's just, um, what is it called? Contrast, right? It brings contrast and it, so now everything looks brighter because it's around the black. And we can doodle on top of the black. That's what I like to make these these kind of things because she'll doodle um, with white pen at the end. So let's see if that looks pretty even. I think I'm good. Maybe over here. I'm going to do it again over here since I I wasn't going to, but I mean, I'm, ma I'm managing okay to get a few th things on there. All right. Now I think I'm going to go into stamping with ink this time. I think I'm going to dry and I'll be right back. So I have my pink stays on. Actually, let's see the name of it. I think it's fuchsia. Fuchsia pink. It's a really bright pink color and I have a circle stamp. This is Diane Reevely. And I just, I'm going to put that in the pink areas again. But it's a little bit of a different color and it has a different sheen. So I'm loving adding this. That's what I found on my other piece. It was so much darker than the other pink though, but I still love how that turned out. And you know what? You just play with what you have. That's what you're going to do. Don't, you know, you don't have to have anything that I have. Nothing. And your piece will be just fine, you know? So I usually try to put it a little bit around the whole thing. What am I trying to say? Like, you know what I mean. Do I need it anywhere else? So your eye can go all around the piece. So I need to put some here. Pink and pink. But look at this orange that I just noticed and I pretty much covered it up. But that is totally orange. I tried to zoom and I hit the off button. I don't know if it's coming up orange, but this is totally orange. It's yellow and pink mixed. Um, just cleaning off my... So this is the front. I have a yellow stays, on, stays on as well. I'm going to see if it'll, if it'll um, show up. This is called... I can't even see the name of it. Oh my gosh. I have no idea because it's so bright. Ugh, no idea. Sunflower. Set it on the back. You know what I'm going to try? Now I'm going to stick with the circles. I'm just going to use the other side of it. I don't know if it's going to show up. I've never used a light color of stamp. But I'm going to try and do it right over like some of this white. So it should. It should show up. We'll see. It did. And it's yellow, but there's also probably color on the stamp already that's coming off. But I like it. 
Yeah, see? And now it's all just kind of... I'm bringing the color back. Oops, I'm still zoomed in. My bad. Um, but I'm bringing the color back. And it doesn't look so messy. Well, I mean, some of you may think it looks really messy. And to each his own. But I feel like it's cleaning it up. Um, and you can see this. I'm pretty happy. I haven't stamped with the yellow before. But I like it. It's very subtle. And that even turned green because I had it on my, um, it's on the stamp. I'm going to try and put some there. This is getting kind of full already. All right, done. What else now? So now, and then I usually do black stamping as well. But I feel like, ah, what the heck. We'll do a little black um, script. I always like to use script in uh, mixed media. And I have, this is a recollection stamp. That's just perfect for this type of thing because you really don't have to, you don't have to care about it very much, and it's, uh, it does very well for the job. So any type of, this is kind of in my way. No matter what, we spread out, don't we? All right, so I'm going to go some script here and there. And this is kind of um, less dark than the paint. When you do the paint, it's a lot darker. And here I go now being, I'm going to go sideways too. What the hell? Um, right up here. A uh, little bit there. A little bit there. But I'm really liking this. It's coming together. And we are not done yet. Um... That smells so good. Do you guys like the smell of stays on? I love it. I'm going to try and readjust things over here to get my palette out of the way. Good. Put my wallet over there. All right. So, now I'm going to kind of, let's close it up and see what we have. So this is my front. I'm going to be stitching black lines. I think I'm going to go around, I'm going to try and go around the whole perimeter before, so like, I'm going to go around the whole perimeter. Hmm. Well, just up and down this way first, and then I'll stitch up the sides. But anyway, um, with black thread, that's how I did it on this one. We could add our butterflies now. And then we would have a better idea because I like to add these circles. These are like, actually these circles were black and they were just too dark. So I went over them with white and it toned them down. I also love to add these scallops because they, um, they soften it for me. They soften it out so much. Um, so I think, and I also want to add washi. And what I noticed was, so you know what we're going to add our butterflies and our washi because we can use the matte medium to kind of seal that on there. But this washi, it's the closest I had to this blue. And there's no blue up here. So I'm going to put some of this up here. Like kind of, I thought, near these black lines. I kind of liked it there. And I just flip it behind because that's going to get stitched. And there's no blue... Uh, I kind of want to put it, now I'm going to put some, I think it looks fine over there, shoot, it's got to go here, just to tie it in and stick it under, what other oh, washies did I have, I had this black, cause I was going to use lead, um, numbers, so I think I'm going to have to come back with my numbers, oh and you know what, we never stenciled yet, oh my god, I'm going to stencil numbers, maybe. But let's put this right here. And right here. I love 
love it. I love it. That looks so cool. And it's something I would never do myself. Like I would never think to just put washi. That's why I love YouTube. Um, I had pulled this pink. I'm going to put some down here. I don't think I actually want a whole strip of it. Like maybe just this. It, what I did was it ripped in half, and I like that better. I don't want it to be a full strip because it's thick. It's a thick piece. So maybe I'll put a piece over here, the other half of it, under here. And it, there's plenty of pink over there, but I still will add it to keep it. I like it now. I'm going to try and see what butterflies. I'm just going to put these two, not the purple one. Save it for another time. But I am. I'm going to put them. And I might do some um, Stabilo pencil around it once I get it on there. Um, so I'm going to go away and get those adhered with my matte medium. I'm also going to put more washi on the other side and adhere that with I'm just going to go over it with matte medium to kind of hold it onto the piece so I'll be right back all right everything's dry I have I put washi on the back and the front and I put my two butterflies so now I'm going to do those scallops and I think I'm going to use the blue I don't have a ton of blue so I think I'm going to do blue and I'm just going to do three or four here and there. I kind of want to do big ones on the bottom. And I'm going to do a couple up here. Just three. I'm going to go around them with the pink. And I'm going to also um, end up going around them with black I think I'm gonna make some black lines but see that kind of softens it I I kind of want to put it up here yeah I'm gonna do like three just three there and then you take a paintbrush and because these are water soluble I'm just going to rub and get a wash of that color to come down into the scallop. And you could do it on the outside as well and pull the color out. But I want mine to be inside so I'm kind of coloring the scallop in. And it's a wash. It's not like solid color and I just loved how this looked on my other piece. It just adds a whole nother type of um, look to it. It's a washy watercolor look. So you can pretty much melt all that blue crayon. You don't need it. And I'm going to go over it with the black to outline it again and give it the scallopy look. And it's almost turning purple. So that purple butterfly might have been able to be okay on here because I'm hitting the pink as well and it's turning purple. OMG, that is so cool. These are really cool, these um, Neo Color 2s. So for mixed media, we're, we've used paint now, paint ink, oh, I'm good, paint ink and watercolor paint, right? So see how it kinda, it'll soften it. Uh, anyway, my bird hears me, that's just great. There's also, I wanted to try this. This is something Robin Marie Smith does. She likes to use her Stabilo pencil, and this is, I have a video where I've talked about this before. This is the Marksall. It, it marks on um, glass, paper, plastic, metal, but it's water soluble and it's really black. So what I'm going to do now is go around my butterflies, just kind of not real neat, and I hope I don't screw the whole thing up by doing this, but it is going to bring them off the back of the page or not bring them off the back of the page. it's going to put them meld them with the page is what I'm trying to say 
And then we're going to stencil one more time with white and kind of put them even better. But again, I'm going to take my water and just go around the outside edge of the butterflies. And Robin really scribbles all over her work too and just is so loose. Like that's the thing, I am not that loose. I'm very, I'm, I'm a little more anal, which I don't like that I just went over that. Um, so it's to each his own. This might not be your thing, but I just thought I'd try it on this one. I didn't do it on my other one, I just used paint. I used a, a paint pen, actually. Um, my... I'll tell you what they're called. Um, Posca paint pens. So I'm not, I mean, actually, I don't hate it. This one, I got, that one's much darker. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to let it dry. Uh, what else did I want to do? So I want to stencil with my go-to circle stencil, white. So I have, well, I need to make get a little more white out and very um get a get a sponge but don't don't um load it up so you want to rub off most of the paint you don't want a ton of paint on here and i probably should dry this but i like it. excuse me i like that i don't know why i'm so burpy today And I'm sure you could use your Faber-Castell pit pens because they do the same thing if you just wanted to shade behind them to make them pop. I just want to dry it because I'm, I'm going to do the stenciling. Um, so let me... I'm going to go right on top of here. Uh, seems like I had a lot of paint. Kind of did. I like it so much. It's really coming together. And even on top of the washi. So it makes it, it just pulls it into the piece. The final thing when we outline everything with black is good because I um, need some up here. gonna take I was gonna use my Posca paint pen but I really want to just use black paint and I'm gonna oh shoot go around all the um, scallops and I'm also gonna add some black like circles so let me get some black and I want to use like a fairly thin brush Something that I can kind of, like a, a, a small round, like a number three round maybe. <clears throat> I don't know why it's not out here because I usually have a number three round. This one looks good. This is a six round, but it has a nice point on it. Here's a number three. Yeah, but I think I might try the six. This is something I got to do watercolor with. And I just want to say, so I'm watering down the paint to make it really inky. And I'm just going to go loosely. But see how I'm making it thicker because I'm, okay. I'm talking to myself. And guys, I know I don't always finish my sentences, but you know. 
Listen, if you need to hear every word, I'm sorry. I'm thinking and I'm just doing this in front of you. It's not like it's, you have to, I don't know. People are funny the way they just like to nitpick, right? But I need more black. I'm going to do some black soikles with my cap, my caps. I love using caps to make circles. You can also use, Kiwi hears me talking, the other side of the cap, the flat part. And let's put a couple right here. One. Two. And then I'm going to doodle in there. Listen, I don't know, there's no rhyme or reason. You just have fun and do what you like, what you think is good. So I'm going to let those dry. And then I think I have to come back with some white. Kiwi, you're killing me. My bird. And I think we're in the home stretch. I'm going to spatter with white and outline. I think I'm going to outline my butterflies with black. You know what I want to do too? A Posca paint pen. Ooh. Sometimes if it's wet, this doesn't. Um, right as well so paint I should probably just paint use paint that's what I've been finding um I'm liking just getting out the old paintbrush instead of a pen I mean pens are so handy that's like the really upside of it but for me I'm I can just grab let's see how this brush is going to do and really water down the paint so that it's like ink and you just, oops, stuck my finger in that one. And then you get the thick, thin, and it just looks kind of more painterly. Is that the word? More natural. But you really got to get enough water on the brush. And then I have another lid that I want to try something. I'm going to put this through the white paint and go, it's a little big. But now's where all your doodling comes in and you can really play with it and just have fun. And Black and white make everything else so bright. What do you think, guys? Are we good? Oops, I didn't do the white up here yet. Spattering is the last thing I'm going to do. I just like spattering. It's fun. This is a lot of paint. I knew I had a lot of paint on there. Oh, 
kind of the white kind of melted into the but I think we're good I'm gonna um, outline everything it's 223 uh, I'm gonna do a stitch line with the sewing machine but before that what did I want to do um, a little last doodling I kind of want to outline the butterflies All right I'll be right back okay I'm finishing up there's so much more you could do guys like I'm just going I think these black dots are a little too intense so I'm just making a swirl inside of them you could use any color you want there's so much doodling you could do um, the scallops are looking pretty good I went back over with a little extra blue like I put a little more blue paint on them but they could be doodled into let's see if all the black um, I outlined my bugs but you could like outline like see here's a leaf let's outline a leaf see how that goes I don't know if it's going to look right, but let's try it. Uh, uh, there's one here. Might have been better to leave them subtle, but I don't... Oh, there's one here. There's no rules. Like, you could put... Um, X, O, X, O, X, O, X, O for kisses. That's what I think they are. Um, so, I mean, the sky is the limit for, for this. You could just continue on until the cows come home. I'm going to spatter now. That's the last thing. And you know what I forgot? I didn't use any gold. On my other piece, I made um, circles in gold, but I'm going to spatter with gold. And I haven't done this very often. This is Craft Paint, King's Gold by Craft Smart. Putting it on my palette, and I'm going to water it down. And I like to use a fan brush, so I'm just grabbing some water on my fan brush. And we'll see how this turns out. It should, oops, I got to go pick up Maya in a minute, so I'm kind of rushing. And then I'll come back and sew it, and I'll show you what that looks like. I also um, use some, what is this called? Soot, black soot, um, distressed ink by Tim Holtz and Ranger to go around all the edges to kind of make it see I could just go crazy with this getting it all over my phone all right stop so yeah so that's good I'm just gonna um go over it real quick and show you I'll come in and some of the things I love about it are when you can see through the color behind, I love that. I love when you can see the color come through. I mean, I could have put flowers. Like, one of the things Kate Crane likes to do is when she has a circle, like these circles could be, they could have been flowers. Like, there's one here. And, like, I'm, I have a spatter all over but you could just put a flower doodle around your circles can you guys am I even in the shot because I zoomed in so she'll just go and find a random flower I mean a random circle and doodle a flower around it and it just adds so uh, another pop of interest so I'm gonna let that dry and go get Maya and basically that's what it looks like and I like it it's a fancy schmancy folder that I had fun making I'll try and close it to show you I can't it's all wet all right I'll get Maya and I'll show you in a minute 
Okay, I got Maya. Everything's dry. Um, I love the spatter with the um, gold. And I just want to add some Distress Ink right along the bottom. I didn't do that. I just went along the edges. But this just finishes it off. And then I'm going to go stitch it. And I'm not going to film that. But I'm just using a straight stitch. And I'll be back to show you when it's done. Alright, I'll be right back. Okay, I think it's done. I did um, stitching around, I, I did the stitching on these two areas and along the bottom when, when the um, file folder was open. And then after I did those, I folded it and then I just went right down the sides. And you just double back on yourself to lock it in. Um, and on this one, <clears throat> the one I did before, I just made stitch marks with my pen because I forgot to do that or I didn't do that and I just thought it would add, you know, it would kind of finish it off to make the stitch marks like that. And I actually just added that heart too because I think I thought it just needed one more. But I love the difference in palette. Just having the darker shades of the same colors, it's very interesting to me but it's basically the same palette. It's a blue, pink, and yellow. Um, so I ended up going over the scallops again, just at darkening the blue on that. I put Wink of Stella on the butterflies, which it's not very glittery. It's kind of shiny, but it's not really glittery. Um, what else? I just outlined the leaves with white and I made a couple of flowers, like I said, with the dots. But that's it. Super simple. And you know what I think I really want to do is make some mail art now. Like, I don't know you guys, like when I start doing something, see how the inside's not finished, but you just finish off. But I love how I did the stitching along the top. I'm going to sign my name. I'm going to use my Posca pen and write Sarah. I did that on this one too. And voila! You have two file folder pouches. So I'm going to post these on my Facebook channel. And thanks for watching!